Bamboo Labs. What? 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 What happened? What happened, Bamboo Labs? You had all all the time in the world. You knew what we wanted. You heard it on the forums, on on multiple videos. You knew. All we wanted was a larger printer. Don't get me wrong. The two tool head, you know, nozzle thing. It's cool. It's cool. I think it's fine. Uh, I think if you're printing multi-material or you're printing in colors, multicolor, the two nozzle system is fantastic. You're going to reduce poop which is the extruded, you know, eliminated product from the printer when you're swapping colors, you're going to reduce the amount of wasted filament significantly. And that's great. I have no complaints about that. My only complaint is the build size. I mean, yes, volumetrically, volumetrically, you're looking at almost a 100% increase. And it doesn't seem that way. When you look at the numbers, you know, three, what is it, 350 by 320, doesn't seem like it's significantly more. And it, but it is. But I really wanted you to compete with that K2 Plus. I wanted you to go after that 350 by 350 area. And I'm surprised you didn't. Then you have this laser component attached. You have to fireproof the whole printer practically. That's an extra expense, making the base printer more costly. And a lot of people, I don't think, wanted a laser. I didn't want a laser. I think a lot of people didn't want to laser Bamboo Labs. A laser is cool, but in a 3D printer, there's three good reasons why that's not a great idea. And we're going to share them in this video, which is hopefully why you clicked it. You saw the title. The first reason that a laser just does not make a lot of sense inside a 3D printer is the fumes. Yes, they're going to come out with the extracting air purifying unit, but I have a CO2 laser in my workshop. I have a dial laser in my workshop. Once you start engraving or cutting something and you really let that machine run, you know, a good 30, 40 minutes of cutting, you get an extensive amount of smoke and you get an extensive amount, amount of, of stench and this just disgusting smell from whatever it is that you're charring away at with the laser. And it doesn't go away easily. I have a six inch exhaust ducting air out of the workshop, full blast. And even then after 20, 30 minutes, it smells like smoke and smoke is everywhere. And even though it's contained, it's in the unit, it's inside the machine, right? It's still just, you can see it. It's, it's all over the inside of the machine. It's getting out over everything. And it's filling up the workshop. And even after you're done, you, you're done with the laser. You're, you, you let it exhaust out for another 10 minutes. And you open that laser up to get your piece out. It still smells like whatever horridness you made in there. A dying animal, I don't know. It smells like burnt forest mixed with... Dying chipmunks, I don't know. It's it's just bad. And I don't want to smell that. I don't think anyone wants to smell that. We do it because we want a lasered product, right? But I try to put all the measures in place to get rid of that smell, like a six-inch duct, taking air out of the workshop, like I said. And it's not enough. So this in your home, or in your kitchen, cutting wood, cutting whatever laser-grade vinyls approved, you know, not standard vinyl because you can't cut st standard vinyl on a on any type of laser but let's say laserable vinyl that's that's approved for using with a laser or acrylics opaque acrylics not clear because you can't cut clear acrylic with this type of laser but opaque acrylics all those nasty chemicals just getting released into your into your kitchen into your house into your office it doesn't make sense for me that is the number one reason there's two others but that's the number one reason you're going to have this smell in your house. All your 3D prints are going to pick up the smell as well. And it's going to be inconvenient and not pleasant. The second reason. The reason you're getting these smells is because you're burning, charring, cooking, basically. Whatever you've put in the laser to get your piece out. 
that leaves debris everywhere. The inside of my laser, I clean out once a month. And that's because I don't use it as often as some others. If I were to be creating products that use a laser on a daily basis, I'd have to clean that probably every four to five days. The debris gets everywhere. It gets all over the rails, the belts, the lenses. At some point, everything is just coated in whatever it is you've been burning, typically wood and, and soot from the smoke that's getting removed. And the air assist helps remove the charring by spraying air, or pushing air onto your piece. But it blows all that soot all over the walls and everything else. So again, do I really want to do that inside my 3D printer? Do I want all that extra maintenance where I have to clean all this interior space and the rails and the belts and the lenses and the gears? No, I don't want that. I don't think anyone wants that. So another good reason, reason number two is you're going to get junk everywhere inside your 3D printer. And that to me is not worth the hassle. You're better off getting a separate machine just for lasering and that way your 3D printer stays nice and clean and pristine as long as possible and you have to do less maintenance on it. Third reason, the price. The difference between the H2D with the AMS and the 40 watt laser version is almost $1,400. That's a lot of money. You can get top of the line, very good solo only laser product for that amount of money and that way you can do two things at once you can 3d print for your etsy orders as they're coming in and you can laser for your etsy orders and you don't have your machine tied up with either one of those tasks when another object comes in or another sale comes in now i get that the argument here is going to say well listen i can get this machine with the laser and now i can do both i can laser on my standalone laser and I can also laser on my secondary laser, the Bamboo H2D, whenever an order comes in and I can push out more product. And that's true. But the cost, you're spending now the $1,400 for that laser unit and then $1,400 again for another unit as a backup, basically. It isn't worth it. In my opinion, what I will be doing, get the H2D with the AMS, $2,200 US, give or take, and just... The rest of it, leave it on the table. 1400 bucks can give you a very good laser machine that's separate and that'll give you a lot more flexibility. So again, bamboo. <sighs> you know that scene in Star Wars? You were the chosen one! Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where it went wrong. But anyways. Let me know in the comments. I could be wrong. You might be on the opposite side of this completely. And to you, this is a phenomenal idea. And you were so glad they came out with this because now you can do exactly what you always wanted. 3D print something and then laser into it and I guess put some stickers on it afterwards. For me, it's a miss. I will pick up the H2D baseline with the AMS2. I think that part is fine. I think it's more expensive than it needs to be because they had to put all this fireproofing inside for that shell to then be used for the H2D laser version. So that's a missed opportunity there to, to really bring down the price a little bit and probably compete stronger on the market there. But it's what they came out with. And honestly, despite what you might think, everyone has their opinions. Bamboo Labs, in my opinion, revolutionized 3D printing. And I'm hoping this machine will do it again. But yeah, missed opportunity. 350 by 350 at an $1,800 price range with the AMS2 would have been knock it out of the park amazing. This is close, but slightly missed the mark. Anyways, thank you for coming to the channel. Thank you for watching the content. Please like, subscribe. That is how YouTube knows what you're enjoying. And that's what helps my channel grow and helps me produce more videos. Thank you so much. And in the meantime, keep on printing.